on the top of Davchav base of his base, Ula points out that the Retzach that he witnessed took place before they crossed the Jordan. Now, on the other side of the Jordan, we have what's called Eber Yarden Amizrachi. That has Kedushas Eretz Yisrael for all Dinah. So what exactly is Ula telling Rabbi Yochanan to sort of calm him down that the murder took place in Eber Yarden? So the Ran says something here that's almost impossible to understand. That the eastern side of the Jordan, Ronis Kadesh Lavasa Omer. We can't bring the Omer from that side of the Jordan. And the Karen Ora and probably everybody else jumps on, on the Ran and says, What are you talking about? I mean, uh, Eber Yardin has the din of Eretz Yisrael for Trumas and Mises for Leket Shik of Hayek Elayim Bikurim and Ari Miklot. So what are you telling me about the, about Omer here? So the Stipler, in his Kilis Yaakov on Shmias, points out that Eber Yardin is different with regard to certain dinim. Like, for example, Eber Yadin has the, the status of Chutzlaret. With regard to Orla, Negebatim, Shviz, there are many dinim where we exclude those dinim in Eber Yadin, given like our quasi Chutzlaret status. And the stipend points out that all these mitzvos, which don't apply in Eber Yadin, the Torah introduces each one of these mitzvahs with the words kisavoel arts. And the Sefri Darshan so arts is referring to Eretz Yisrael miuchedes, which is on the western side of the Jordan, and not Eber Yadin on the eastern side. And in the parish of Avasa Omer, it also says kisavoel arts. So it could be that this is what the Ran derived from this pasuk of Kisavola Oretz, that Eber Yardin, as far as Havos Omer is concerned, and a very few other dinim, has the status of Chutzlot. Now this Gemara is very difficult for another reason, because the Gemara elsewhere tells us that there was Ritzicha. One second, where did I have this here? Maybe it's on the previous page. Oh, the Mishnah says in Sota on Daf Mem Zayin, Misha Robo Ratzchanim Botla Egla Rufa. Now Egla Rufa is only in Eretz Yisrael. So when it says Botla Egla Rufa, we're talking about Eretz Yisrael, and we're talking about Riboy Ratzchanim. So you see clearly that there were Rotzchim in Eretz Yisrael. Very, very difficult to do. Going on, Omar Rab Bar Afuda called Kohis Afilu Shchina in a Chashuv, but he doesn't even pay, pay attention to the Shchina. Even if he encounters the Shchina, he's not aware of. He's he does not curious because he's Bakash. And Emar it says in Pilim Rosha Kigova Apo Bal Yidrosh Ein Elohim Kol Mizmor Mizmoso. This Rosha, who's Gova Apo, he gets angry. Bal Yidro Shashem is Maso, Enol Kim Kol Mizimoso. You know, all his thoughts are like there's no God in the world. He's mamish like a Kofi. And he's not worried about God punishing him. Rabbi Yirmi Difti Omar Mishakeh Talmud Omosif Tipshis. He's going to forget his Torah knowledge. And worse than that, he's going to be a Tipish. Shenema Poskin Kohel Sperg Zain Kikas Bechek Sil Yanuak. 
that a person who's a co-ace, he gets angry, he's a seal, he's a fool. He doesn't know what he learned. Uksiv, and regarding Uksil, it says Uksil Yifros Av Ivelis. Uksil is someone who reveals publicly his tipshes. When he gets angry, he loses control of himself, and he's most of tipshes. He says the following here, the name of a sefer called Lishmoa Belimudim. I'm not familiar with that sefer. He says that the Shechina, the word Shechina refers to the Ratzon Hashem and the Nahogas Hashem in this world. A person who's Makir Hanhogas Hashkochas Hashem in this world does not come to Kaz. Therefore, the, ko the Kohes must, must be someone who's not Makshir the Shechina. He's not Makshir the Hanhogas Hashem. Shechina means Hanhogas Hashem in this world. Now, one of the Akronim asks the following question on Rabbi Yirmiya. Why does Rabbi Yirmiya, who wants to prove that a Kohis forgets his Torah, why does he find it necessary to stretch his arm out to a Drush Apostolic in Mishle? The Gemara says in Psalm Samach Vav, Kol Adam Shekohis Es Shekohis Im Chacham Hu Chachmas Umis Taklekes Nimenu Mi Moshe Rabbeinu. So we don't need a Pesach in Mishle in something that's derived from the Torah itself. Because in Bamidbar Perik Laminal, if it says about Moshe, Vayiktsof Moshe al Pekudei Achayel, and afterwards it says, Vayomer Elazar HaKohen Al-Anshi Atzova HaBoyim Al-Melchama Zos Chukas HaTorah Asher Tziva Hashem Es Moshe. So it means all of a sudden Elazar HaKohen takes, takes charge of Pesach in Shilas. What happened to Moshe? And the answer is, that just previously, Moshe got angry at the Bukhudi Achayim. So the answer is that that cause with regard to Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't prove that a person loses his Chachma completely. It's only Lashon. Our Gemara is saying that a Koes is Meshake Talmud Olegamen. He has to start from scratch. And that's what the Gemara wants to prove from the Post of Mishle. He cast the Chek Sil in Yonuah. And we're talking about a person who has completely forgotten who Shokach is Talmud Oligamit. And I'm a Shabbat Talmud, Rak Lishah, that's not called Exil. But this guy is called Exil because, forget it, you know, he's, his Torah, his Torah is forgotten. But now for Yitzhak Omar, with regard to Kas, the Yodua Shabbanosa Marum Nisquiosa. And the Mephoshim explained the following. That there's a battle between the Eitzah Hara and the Eitzah To, between Avonos and Squios. And if a person has rogue Squios, or at least, you know, he has as many Squios as, as Avonos, he's not going to get angry. If he gets angry, that's a proof that it's rogue Avonos. Shenemar Ubal Chemo Rav Pesha, a positive mission. Had they not sinned, there would be no need for Sifrei Nevi'im with the exception of Sifrei Yoshua. Why is Yoshua so important? She'erka shall Eretz Yisrael hu. Because in Sefer Yoshua, we have all the, you know, the boundaries and the nachlos, you know, that which would be divided up, the inheritance of Eretz Yisrael, it's all organized there in Sefer Yoshua. So Gemara says, my time. How do we know that all these sparim, Sefer Yoshua, is because of the chait of Kali? So Gemara answers, based on a post again, Koheles, keep a rov chachma rov kas. That if we have ribui divrei chachmas anavim, it means that there's rov kas that bnei yisrael were machis as hakadosh baruch hu with their sins, and that's why we have ribui divrei chachmas. So the vim have to castigate the Jewish people because of their sin. Amar Avasi exit nis kachim lo hey Yisrael 
We're not going to be matur shvua in a case of somebody who's nishba b'shem, or at least lechachilu we shouldn't do it. Chutz, unless it's an Indian of shalom bites. The excuse me, konam ishti nenesli. I'm putting my wife. Into a konam and she's not allowed to benefit from me. She got was kisi. She stole money from my pocketbook. The hiksas bini and she beat up my son. And know that then you find out later shalom gavsa shalom gavva veloshi kisa. And therefore we're going to be very lenient about this neder and the shvu I should say because of shalom even though it's the shvu of the shame. Now, the obvious question here is there's a brysa quoted later on in Chav Ches that there's not locus, Beisil, Beit Shama, is there a Shailan Shmua or not? And Beisil holds there is a Shailan Shmua. So, how could Ravasi here, Paskin, that we're not going to be uh, Shoel and Nedu so the Ran raises this question. He answers, Ravasi doesn't hold like you give to the Gemara there that they're arguing Beisil Beit Shammai about whether or not we could be Matir Shmuel. But Ravasi is of the opinion that everybody agrees unanimously there's no She'el on a Shmuel. Then the Ran says that Beisil holds that there is She'el on Shmuel, but L'Chadchila, we're not going to be Matir Shmuel. Whereas the Shalmi Nadar, one of the later Achronim, says, no, you know what? The Ran's cash is not a cash because the Ran understood that we're not, we're not going to be Nizkov to be Matur any Shvur. But really, we only sing a lot of Shvur B'Shem. Then we're not going to be Matur. Later on, when Basil say there is Shalom B'Shvur, he's talking about a Shvur without a shame, and therefore it lends itself to she'il. Now, the Ran says this Gemara is difficult because at the end of the day, we find out that his wife did not steal. We find out that this rumor was not true that she hit the sun. And that's called Shvuas Shigigos, a Shigagam. We had later, earlier on Davchav, we had the Mishnah at the beginning of the Parakah, and one of them is Nidresh Gogos. And this is a classic case of Nidresh Gogos. So the Ran quotes the Rajva that in our case, which says, no, the Shalonignava, Shaloganva, excuse me, is Medubar, Shaomer, Shaafim Loganva, Kavanasi, Leasrabano in which he indicated in his Lashon HaShvua that even if she didn't steal, I'm still imposing the Shvua, maybe because she did something that was not, was not appropriate. Now, the reason why we don't want to be Matur Shvua is because Chacham Oker Sanedemei Karo Im Yatur Sashvua Nimtze Shahutzi Shem Shemayim Uvatola Because we're going to be okay the shul of my friend. Hahida soil and kamidur of Asi. Omar law. So a woman comes to be my toshua. And Ramasi asks her, but my nadar. Tell me. <coughs> tell me a little bit about the shul. And she responds, Bel okay, Yisra. Oh boy. <laughs> you mentioned God's name in Yeshua, that's going to be a problem. Omar law, Saravasi says to her, Ina dat be Mohi, had you taken the net, did not be shame Eloke Yisrael, but be shame Mohi, which means Moshe. And Moshe Rabbeinu had taken the Shvua to his father in law Yisro. And this is back on Daf Yud, we learned it in the mission of Mohi as a kinui for. A shvur because Moshe Rabbeinu took a shvur to his father-in-law, and the intention of Moi is that the shvur should be chal like the shvur of Moshe Rabbeinu. Then I would be mati your shvur because then there's no askarat shem. But hash the Lord and died for Moi el bela hey Israel. Now that you mentioned the name of God in your shvur, you didn't say 
Mohi. It's low and stuck. Hinaloch, I cannot be Mati Yeshua because Yeshua B'Shem ain't Matir Nos. Rav Kahane Iklo Lebei Rav Yosef. Omole. So if Yosef turns to Rav Kahane, he says, Lito Mar Midi, please eat something. Well, you don't trust my kasha? Omole, Rav Kahane responds, Lo, I don't want to eat from you. It's not clear why he was so adamant about it. And then he takes a shvua. So again, this is Rav, Ka Rav, Rav Kahane taking a shvua. Mari, the, Mari Kula, the, the, the Adon of, of everything, the Almighty, Lo I'm not going to take a taste from your food. And that's a Nishba B'Shem. Omolei, Rav Yosef says, Rav Kahane, Lo Mari Kula, Lo Ta'im Tulei, Badona Kol Shalom Titom Lo. Is a tremendous machlokas mafarshim exactly what Rav Yosef is saying here? But the Gemara itself understood that Rav Yosef is taking a shmur that Rav Kana won't eat from him, which makes no sense. Fanicha le Rav Kana damer lo mari kulo. We understand why Rav Kana took the shmur. He didn't want to collapse, you know, give in after Rav Yosef is begging him to eat. But Rav Yosef, am I omo lo mari kulo? Why is Rav Yosef taking a shvur that Rav Kahana won't eat from him? I don't, I don't remember Rav Kahana wants him to eat from him. So the more answer is, no, we, we misunderstood Rav Yosef. He didn't take a shvur that Rav Kahana won't eat from him. But this is what Rav Yosef was saying to Rav, Yo, Rav Kahana. Isn't it true that you took a shvur of Hashem Hashem? Hilkoth, therefore, since you mentioned the name of God in your shvur, lo to implant. There's no way, no how that you can eat from my food because we can't be mati yeshvua. And that's like we saw in Ravasi before that we're not going to be mati yeshvua b'shem. Omar Rav Rav Nachman, Hilchasa, Poskin b'charata, and in his kokim l'alke Yisrael. Baruch Hashem, the Gemara finally comes to the halachic conclusion that we could be mekil, and back on Daf Kafal, if we had a machlokas from Yudhim of Yishmoel about where the post of Becharota, Rav Nachman says we pass in La Loka, the post of Becharota. We'll see what that means in just a second. And we can be Matir, a Shmua, even a Shmua B'Shem against Ravasi, who prohibited it. Now, what does it mean, post of Becharota? So the Ran and the Rosh say that's only a Charota to make Kara. In other words, he has to be mischaried on the moment, regarding the moment that he took the ned. But if he's happy with his ned there, as far as Lamafre is concerned, retroactively, he's not upset about the ned. He doesn't regret the ned there. But right now, he has circumstances that lead him to the conclusion that he would like to be mevatal the ned there and cancel it out. In such a case, we're not matir. Uh, a So poskin becharata means maker. Mishtachatle Rava Rava Rav Nachman Rav Schora, a man by the name Rav Schora, and Rava starts praising Mishtachatle to Rav Nachman the greatness of this Rav Schora. And one second, sorry. The Onam Gol, who is a great man. Omolo, so not responds to Rav. Because Yavo, Liyadecho, when he comes around Rav Skorah, then have you all Liyad, send him my way. I like to meet this Onam Gol. Now, as it turns out, Havi lay Nidral and Mishra. Rav Skorah had taken an Eder. Apparently, a very serious neder, and he was looking to be matter the neder. Or still a comedy of Nachman. He comes to Rav Nachman to be matter his neder. So, this is the way that, Rav, you know, Rav Schaura could get to the, present himself, so to speak, to Rav Nachman. But the story that unfolds is not very, you know, it's not very happy in terms of creating a new companionship and friendship because. 
Rav Nachman starts interrogating him to find a Pesa. So he might have his nether. Omolei, no doubt that I tell Hoki, had you known this, would you have taken the nether? Omolei, in Rav Skora says, I have to be honest with you, I would have taken the nether. I knew about that. So Rav Nachman comes back with another possible Pesa. He says, I died to the Hoki. And he comes up with a new idea. Had you known X, would you have taken the nether? And again, Rav Skora. The Kamakam is in this, goes on time after time again. Rav Nachman is working overtime and schwitzing to be mata the neder with different kinds of uh, pesa, and he can't find a pesa to be mata the neder. Ikhra Rav, Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman was not happy with the score. You took such a neder, it's such a stark uh, neder that I can't find any crack in the neder. You shouldn't have taken such a neder. Because on every question that I ask, you, you, you're not willing to say I'm a mischar. Amale, Sor Nachman tells Rav Skorah, Zil, pack your bags, Lekila, go home. I can't do anything to you. Nafich Rav Skorah, Uposach Pischo Nafshe. Now, Rav. Now that Rav Nachman gets so angry at Rav Skorah, Rav Skorah understands that he has a Pesach. Because had he known that through this neder, which he took in such a strong neder, the Chacham, meaning Rav Nachman, would not be able to, to find a Pesach and he's going to get angry at him and throw him out, then he never would have taken the neder. As we learned in the Mishnah, Rabbi Omer Ezi, Derek Yishar, Shiyom, Elohim, Koshi, Tversel, Seven, Tversel, Ben so you want to be Meshuvah, you know, you need to Ferris Meshavach Li Adam. And it means that everybody's Meshavach, everyone is, is praising the way you're going, the derech that you're going in, and you're doing the right way. And now I took a neder, a shvua, and I didn't know that Rav Nachman was going to be so marked on me. Hashra the Ikvid Rav Nachman, I never would have taken the neder if I would have realized how upset Rav Nachman was going to be about this neder because he can't find a pesa, and then basically, Rav Schor is saying, "Al das came on Had I known about the anger of the chach, of the of the chacham, I never would b'sharol and And based on this, he was able to be matir his neder with a chok. Apparently, he went to a different chok. Some say actually that he went back to Rav Nachman. Well, that would be good because then he sort of reconciled himself with Rav Nachman. But the Rashba and the Miri point out that you can't take this Gemara literally and say Sharul and Nafshe because a Talmud Chacham ain't no Yochel. He he can't be he can't be matter his own neighbor. One second. Oh, now they quote Yeshe Pirshu, some anonymous Rishon, that a Talmud Chacham cannot be mocked his own neder through Harata. That he has to do at a Chacham. However, if he finds that Al Das King Lohoya know there, so we're not talking about Harata, but that he was missing a idea. And had he been aware of that, he never would have taken the nether. That's a toast, and he could be mocked for himself. Because once you have this Pesach, that al the Hachi Loya know there, then he never had a nether at all. Again, we shown to reject this parish, but I just wanted to make sure that we were aware of this parish. Now, the Ran asks another Kashi here. We're going to have a sugi later on on Daf Chav Gimel, tomorrow's Daf, called Nolan. That you can only be Mater Neder based on what is Shriach that, that you can anticipate from the time of the Neder that down the line this is going to happen. But if it's Nolan, you know, something that was not on the horizons at all, then you can't be Mater the Neder. So why, Lechora, why is this is this Hataris Nidorim Shayach here for Rav Skora? It should be a case of Nola. Because all of a sudden, Rav Nachman gets 
so to speak, perturbed by him. He gets these mocked in him. So the Ron answers that this is something that's Motsu, it's not Nola. It's Dover Shriak Sha Odom Golkra Nakli Yakbid Al Misha Nodar Nezer Khazakol Kak Shi Epsilon Solo Pesafan Fiel. And therefore it's not Nola. The Gumar brings another story. Rabbi Shimon Barebi Avile Nijal Mishra. Also the Kami the Rabbonam. Amrile, they asked him, Nadarta Daiti the Hokri. Would you have taken the nether had you known X? Omer in, I, I was aware of that, and I took the nether. I died to Hachi in, Kavazin, again, over and over, back and forth, and they can't find a pest. Every time they asked him another question, Rabbi Shimon Rebbe answered, I would have taken the nether in any event. On Kav Gimel Amid Aleph, for a mitztari Rabbonah, and Rabbanu was such in such a state of sad that they couldn't find a Pesach to be mad to this neder that the shimshal etula mitula shimshal. They were walking around in and out from the sun into the into the shade, from the shade back into the sun. They were in such a state of sad that they couldn't find a Pesach. Amale, but this brave the Abishol ben Butnis. So somebody. By this name, asked to Rabbi Shimon Berev, you mean Adarta Daite? Would you have taken this nether had you known that Mitztayir Rabbanon, the Rabbanon could be so Mitztayir on the fact they can't find a, a, a Pesach for your for your nether? That Mitul Shimshu Mishimshu Atul. That's how Mitztayir they are. They're running around inside, outside, it's like they, they like they're ripping their hairs. Omlelo, he says. Rabbi Shimon Berev, he says, no, I wouldn't have taken the nether had I known this was going to happen. Show you. And then they were matter is neder. Okay, then. So this is where we're going to stop here on Daf of Gimel Amid Aleph. Thank you so much. So tomorrow, Mitz Hashem, it's about officially. I think it's called for nine forty-five, but. Lamaisa, you have to hang in there a little bit because uh, it all depends on the previous lecture who usually goes over time, but uh, 10.45, 9.45, 9.50, something like that. Call to them a great day.